If you work for a company that does performance reviews, chances are that you will walk out of that review focusing on how you can improve upon your weaknesses. For example, let's say you're a brilliant engineer that doesn't put out the best communications. Your communication style might be deemed as a development need. But is focusing on your development needs and weaknesses the best path for you to excel? One book in the development method associated with it, StrengthsFinder 2.0, definitely challenges that approach. Let's learn more. Hey Streamliners, Greg here to look at the book StrengthsFinder 2.0 and the methodology they present to help people excel. Research was started by Don Clifton and a team of Gallup scientists to start a global conversation about what's right with people. They theorize that people have several times more potential for growth when their energy is focused on developing one's strengths instead of correcting their deficiencies. After considerable research, they identified 34 primary strength themes which they classify as your Clifton strengths. In their research, they found that if your manager ignores you, you have a 40% chance of being actively disengaged at work. When the manager focuses on your weakness, you have a 22% chance of being disengaged. So that's an improvement over a manager simply ignoring your employees. However, companies can do better. The Gallup team found that if a manager focuses on your strengths, you have a 2% chance of being actively disengaged. Now that's a pretty powerful message. But I like that the philosophy doesn't try to push that everyone can be successful in every position. You and I both know that there are things we do really well and other things we're not great at. Rather than steering people down the path of a career where their skills don't align, StrengthsFinder provides a test that identifies your top five strengths. It is argued by crafting and focusing on any of those five strengths, you have a greater chance of success. This includes identifying careers that leverage those strengths. We've all heard the maxim, you can be anything you want to be. However, they flip that to be, you cannot be anything you want to be, but you can be a lot more of who you already are. When you are not using your strengths on the job, chances are you dread going to work. You have more negative than positive interactions with your colleagues. You might treat your customers poorly. You tell your friends what a miserable company you work for. And you achieve less on a daily basis. And you also have fewer positive and creative moments. So what are these skills and how does my training and education play into them? It turns out that training and education don't define your strengths. Rather, if you have a strength that your training and education support, they will serve as amplifiers. For example, if I'm five foot three, slow, and can't shoot a basketball well, practicing 100 hours a week for the next 10 years won't get me into the NBA. Let's quantify the analogy a little. So I'm saying my natural strength for basketball is a one out of five, but my perseverance is a five out of five. Let's multiply those two values together. One times five gives me a rating of five. Likewise, my friend is a six foot eight gazelle of an athlete that has no desire to ever practice. And they may have the athleticism of a five, but the perseverance of a one, making them a five as well. But what about the person that has that five rated athleticism and applies the training of the first person for a perseverance of a five as well? Five times five is 25. They will have amplified their abilities over the other two players. So what is this telling us? Well, first, your strengths determine what you are apt to excel at with proper development. What do you have a natural aptitude to succeed at? Next, you do need to know what your weaknesses are, but not to spend countless hours improving them. Remember, those examples we just looked at, multiplying strengths or talents with perseverance or training. Well, the lowest possible rating is a one and the highest possible rating was a 25. So that puts the average at 12 and a half. Now, if my strength of something is a one or two, then no matter how hard I work at it, I will never be any better than lower average. Gallup rather recommends to find those that can complement your skills. For example, you're an incredible engineer, but a horrible communications writer. Find someone on the team that has communication skills in spades. By complementing each other, you will amplify your outputs. Have you ever heard of the saying, the whole is greater than the sum of the parts? This saying is especially true for teams that may have decent to good skills individually, but when the team optimizes and complements each other, the team becomes an even better resource than if you added up all the skill levels of those members. Well, how does the test work? It takes about 20 minutes and pits two different, though not necessarily opposite, thoughts and asks what you better align with. You can be strong or lightly leaning towards one or the other, 
or you can give a neutral rating. Upon completion, the test is graded to provide you with your scientifically determined strengths. There are 34 identified strengths, of which you are given your top five. You then take your strengths and turn to the book to learn more about how you might better develop them. Now, each chapter provides examples of what a person might be like with that particular strength. It also provides ideas for action to further grow that strength, and finally, how to work with people that have that strength. This test is great to take for your own development, but can be even more impactful when a team takes this test and compares their strengths. By knowing what your aptitudes are, you can amplify your development. By knowing the strengths of your teammates, you can determine how to best amplify their skills and leverage their talents to work with you. In all, I really got a lot of value out of the book and the test. So I'm going to tell you my ratings in just a second. But if you found this interesting, I highly recommend picking up a copy of the Strength Finder 2.0 for either yourself or your entire department. If you like these types of videos, please consider subscribing. As for me, my top five strengths are learner, futuristic, maximizer, positivity, and input. If you've been watching my videos, you can probably see this pretty easily. Now I challenge you to take the test as well. And until next time, take care.